Let's get ready to rumble. Step into the war zone. 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 Friday night war zone. Friday night war zone. Hey yo, it's Phil Flames. I'm with Mike on the mic and Joe Morley. About to bring you more heat. Welcome to the war zone. You can have a floor seat. Watch him on your iPhone, watch him on your Galaxy It's a sports debate show, straight up out of SoCal Gather around the laptop, Friday nights it goes down And we on the radio, coming to your locale Got into the third round, better bring the smoke now Step into the war zone 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 Step into the war zone, Step into the war zone. Step into the war zone. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Friday Night Wars. I'm Joe Morley with Mike on the mic. What's up? What's up? And you guys already know we do a debate show here, and we debate, and you guys pick the winners. Well, last week, I won. Of course. Of course I won, right? I, so I get my little minute of fame, and here I go. Everyone knows I'm a huge Dodger fan, right? Huge Dodger fan, and the Dodgers won the World Series. And it's been a, ever since they won last night. You know, it's been a dream. And <clears throat> you guys, you, do you know how great it is to just wake up and actually see highlights and read articles about your team doing something great? Like your team is finally the one that did something right. You're not reading something about how they blew it, how they blew their chance. It's amazing. It's a great feeling. And most of you guys don't know my story, but 2020 has been a rough year. I struggled with a, a major respiratory injury at the beginning of this year. And, uh, at so, you know, at some points during my problems, I would ask my wife, I would just sit there and I'm like, hey, tonight's going to be the night I die, right? I'm going to die, right? And I couldn't even speak sentences without struggling. It was one of the worst sicknesses of my life. But I battled through it, you know, with the love of my family and pushed me through. My illness was actually one of the th reasons, you know, I started doing podcasts and I got to meet Mike here and the Ryan Sports Show, which was an, an excellent opportunity for us. So when the Dodgers won the World Series, it just made everything in, two, in 2020 worth it. To be able to celebrate with my kids, my wife, my family, and see the happiness on our face, it just reminded me that everything is going to be okay. So I thank you. Thank you, LA Dodgers, for everything that you guys done this year. This has brought smiles back to me, my family, and many other people, countless people in Los Angeles and in California. It feels great to be able to say that the Dodgers are the 2020 World Series champions, and no one, no one can take that away. Wow. What a great victory speech, Joe. You didn't even have time to tear into me because the Dodgers did it. <laughs> God, yeah, you got, lucky. You <laughs> they, got lucky. The Dodgers saved you, so you can say thank you to the Dodgers. Yeah, they, 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 they brightened our lives with the World Series ring, and they also brightened – my life and saved me from getting torn into on your first victory. <laughs> but I'm sure I have many more. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure if you ever win again, I'm going to hear it. I doubt you will, though. I doubt you will, though. <laughs> Anyways, you ready to go to war, man? Episode oh, three? Oh, let's do it. Let's go to war, y'all. Okay, gentlemen, I want a clean fight. First question Which trade deadline move would you like to see most? So you know what a trade I could see happening is? If you follow my podcast, you may be able to predict this one. You may be able to call this one. You may see this one coming. So I've talked about it a few times here and there. I want to see Julio Jones get traded to the Green Bay Packers for Alan Lazard, a third-round pick, and a fifth-round pick. It makes so much sense to me, not just for the Packers to get Julio Jones, one of the greatest receivers ever, but also for the Atlanta Falcons. Think about it. The Falcons get a young wide receiver to offload some cap. They get a few picks towards, you know, their inevitable rebuild that they're about to start right now. The Packers, on the other hand, get one of the best wide receivers in football when he's healthy. Something that has been a missing piece for them for the past few seasons and is going to continue to be a missing piece as long as they don't draft receivers in the first round. You know what I'm about to say. Green Bay, <laughs> do you want to win another Super Bowl with that bad man down there in Wisconsin? 
because drafting backup quarterbacks in round one is not going to cut it. But making moves just like this one to get Julio Jones will 100% increase your chances of winning a Super Bowl while Aaron Rodgers is still there. Acquiring Julio Jones and pairing him with Devontae Adams is a way that you could make this team go from NFC Championship contender to Super Bowl contender. The wide receiver core would immediately be the best in football, paired with one of the best quarterbacks in football history, trioed with one of the best offensive lines and running back groups in football as well. This Packers offense will become unstoppable. And as I said, this is a Super Bowl winning move on the table for Green Bay to make happen. A very rare window to acquire a player like Julio Jones. The NFL trade deadline, it used to not be a thing. It, it, it was like it would come every year and nothing exciting would happen and people just like blow it off. Well, the last couple of years has been getting bigger and bigger and that's, what, that's why we're even discussing it today, right? Uh, personally, I would love to see Stephon Gilmore traded from the Patriots. Hey, they're not doing good right now, right? Are they really going to pay him? He has this year and, the, and next year under contracts. So somebody's going to have to pay him. It's probably not going to be the Patriots because they really don't hand out big contracts. Two teams that I have in mind, Seattle Seahawks or the Las Vegas Raiders, right? One of those teams would come out and do it. I think it's going to be Seattle. I think Seattle needs to make the move. They need something because if you've been watching their games, their defense is horrible, <laughs> horrible defense. I mean – you can make the de- debate on another show. We can make a debate Seattle or Dallas, who has the worst defense, you know what I mean? But Russell and that offense, they're a scoring machine. But defense isn't helping them at all. And you see them. They just lost to Arizona Cardinals because they have no defense. Uh, they picked up Carlos Dunlap. There's going to be a big help. But it's going to cost Seattle. It's not going to be cheap. Trust me on that. It's not going to be cheap. But the NFC West is loaded and probably one of the toughest divisions to win right now. So Seattle needs to pull out all the stops, get this deal done, and they're not afraid to make moves. Seattle's not afraid to make moves, and they give up big picks, and they go and do it. Stephon Gilmore to the Seattle Seahawks. I kind of like that move. I kind of like Seattle or Stephon Gilmore to Seattle. Pair him with Jamal Adams, and Jamal Adams can get healthy. And Bobby Wagner, that improves mm-hmm. their defense substantially. All they would need is a pass rusher. And all of a sudden, Seattle's back to, you know, what they used to be when they won the Super Bowl last. Well, yeah. And look at that. Look at that NFC West. If you want to compete, because everybody, you build up for your division. Everybody's been, you know, building up to go after Seattle, to go after San Francisco. They know their weaknesses. And if you want to win that division, you got to do it now. It's crazy. I actually really like your trade. I like mine more, of course. Don't get me wrong. If you guys are voting, Vote for me in the comments right this second because obviously Julio Jones, Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers would be perfect for the Green Bay Packers. And I know that you want to see Aaron Rodgers win another Super Bowl more than you want to see Seattle win another Super Bowl right now. You already gave it up. You already said I won. So go ahead. (laughs) Put it down there. Put it on the board. I said said that if he was going to get traded, Stephon Gilmore would be a good fit in Seattle. There you go. You happy? You happy? Put it on the board. <laughs> on the chalkboard right behind you. Just mark it real quick. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Vote for who you think won this round. We're going to move on to the next round. Okay, gentlemen. Question number two. Which team do you believe is most likely to repeat as world champions? The L.A. Dodgers or... The L.A. Lakers. I think the Dodgers are in a great spot to repeat. It won't be easy for sure. For sure it won't be easy because they're not going to have to play 162 games. They will need to figure out first who they're going to bring back. They got Turner, Peterson, Kiki, Trennan, Wood, Baez, all of them are free agents, right? What are they going to do with Gavin Lux? And I think the biggest thing is shopping Kenley Jansen. Where is he going to go? How much money is that going to free up, right? Once they get that taken care of, the main core of the team is back. Mookie, Bellinger, A.J. Pollock, Muncie, Seager, Will Smith, Chris Taylor. Without adding anything, that's already a solid lineup to come back with, right? They have the championship. They're going to have the ring. They know what needs to be done now. They know, they know they almost blew it in the Atlanta series. They already know that. So they know what they need. They need pitching. They need to go out there and secure a little bit more pitching, secure that bullpen, maybe get another starting pitcher. But the road through the NFC or the, through the NL West is pretty easy, right? It's pretty easy. The Dodgers own the NL West. Eight straight NL West titles. Eight straight. 
the Padres hung with them only because it was a 60 game season only because it was a 60 game season, but you saw them break down towards the end. The Dodgers are going to make the changes. They're going to add the little pieces here and there, and they're going to repeat. And because they want to go down as one of the best teams in MLB history. First of all, I would like for both the Lakers and the Dodgers to repeat. I just want to put that out there. Huge Lakers fan, huge Dodgers fan. I want them both to repeat. But I come to you with a very simple argument as to why the Lakers are more likely to repeat as champions of their respective league. It's three things. One, the nature of the sport of basketball versus the nature of the sport of baseball. Much different setups there. Two, the Lakers free agent says off-season opportunities. I know the Dodgers have a lot of opportunities. You just listed a bunch of them. And then three, we have LeBron James, the greatest basketball player ever. I said it. All right, moving on. The nature of baseball is very different than basketball. It's way more likely that a team can become a World Series team in one off-season and come out of nowhere when no one saw it. I mean, come on, Joe. You predicted the Athletics to go. I predicted the Angels to go. We were both way off on those predictions. But it's hard to predict baseball that's just that's just a fact compared to basketball where you can kind of predict who the good teams are going to be the offseason for the Dodgers is very cloudy versus the Lakers we could see Kike Jock Peterson Justin Turner you know and a lot of other names that you listed that could be gone after the season definitely a lot of question marks as if this World Series team is going to be the same team next season the Lakers have contracts that are beneficial to the team once Anthony Davis signs the long-term deal he's going to sign with the Lakers they can start attacking the trade block and free agency we can see Chris Paul Bradley Beal land in Los Angeles the Lakers could make a run at Derrick Rose as well. The championship Lakers have the opportunity to repeat as champions next year as long as they have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. My A's pick was way the hell better than your Angels pick. It was a lot better. I will <laughs> give you that. Don't, don't, don't lump that in as the same thing. Uh, my, my Angels pick was a, a throwing a baseball into the outfield and hoping it lands in the bucket. But the catch was is I was wearing a blindfold when I threw it. <laughs> don't, don't ever try to put, <laughs> put my picks and your picks in this. Hey, but at least we got the Dodgers right. <laughs> at right? least we got the Dodgers we, right. We got the winner right. We both I got mean, the winner of the series right, technically. So at least we got the Dodgers. But The Lakers are going to repeat, though. I know we got Golden State coming back. We got Kevin Durant. You had a lot back. of ifs. A lot of ifs, if Davis signs, if we bring in a free I said agent. when. I said when Davis <laughs> signs and when we land these big-name free agents slash trades. And I know they're going to do it just because LeBron James is in charge of that team. And when have you ever seen LeBron James not push his management to go and build a team around him? Is LeBron not just, James. <laughs> Dwight LeBron Howard, James. Rondo, these guys aren't just going to be gone. And I was actually going to dress up as LeBron James for this episode in the honor of Halloween, but I couldn't find my headband and I couldn't find my arm sleeve. So right now I'm just like a poor man's uh, Caruso more than LeBron James. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to the next round because I easily won that one and I won the first round. So this is already over, but we'll do it. For um, Dodgers World Series back to back. I mean, I would, I would love Put it, it on the board. Put it on the board. <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, your third and final question is, will Antonio Brown be impactful with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Will Antonio Brown be impactful for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, look at what Antonio Brown has done in his career. Six straight 100 reception seasons. Six straight 1,300-yard seasons, or damn near 1,300 yards. The lowest one in those six seasons was 1,284 yards. Six straight, eight-plus receiving touchdown seasons. We are only one and a half seasons removed from this Antonio Brown. This isn't Des Bryant. This isn't Terrell Owens trying to come back. This guy was doing this two years ago. I think most of the NFL fans have forgotten just how good Antonio Brown was. This guy isn't an 800-yard, three-touchdown guy. He is not a guy that was a second receiver on a team. A.B. is actually one of the greatest receivers of the past decade and will still be a very acceptable option for Tom Brady. Antonio Brown might be a Hall of Famer already. He might be. It, it's, it's pretty close. Right this second. You might be right. Antonio Brown isn't going to come out the gate firing all cylinders. We're not going to see 200 yards and two touchdowns in the first game. 
Tampa Bay will have to work him in. They'll have to find his place in this offense. But come playoff time, when it matters, I could see him building momentum and taking Tampa Bay to the next level, to damn near unstoppable. I could easily see business start booming in the playoffs versus the New Orleans Saints for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown as an impact to the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a team? I don't see it. I don't see it. There's way too many mouths to feed in Tampa Bay. Way too many. What's wrong with Mike Evans? Chris Godwin, Scotty Miller, Rob Gronkowski, Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette. What's wrong with those guys? That's a lot of people already, and now you want to add one more? I mean, how much, how much more do you have to have on that offense? Brown hasn't played since week one of 2019. And in that game, he scored a touchdown, maybe had a little, a little over 50 yards, right? He wasn't the, the Antonio Brown that we remember. He, he, he played, but he wasn't that great, right? There's no doubt he is a great athlete, but I don't see him and the Bucks putting it together, and I don't think the Bucks are good enough, you know, to, to be able to take his mental capacity into the game. I think they're, they're good enough right now without him Quite frankly, I think they are. They don't need him. So to bring him in, there's no impact. It's not going to help the team. It's not going to hurt the team unless he can block from Tom Brady, which the O-line is doing a great job of for already. So unless he's going to block, I don't see him making an impact this year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm about to make a hot take. Hot, fiery, <laughs> steamy, flaming take, Okay. Woo, get the fire extinguisher about, ready. About to say it. I didn't want to say it in my segment. I wanted to hear what you had to say first before I say something this crazy, and people are probably going to come knocking at my door any Hold second on. after I say it. Let me call 911. Yeah, don't, okay, okay, wait a sec. Don't call him. Don't call him. I don't actually want problems, okay? Mike Evans has been struggling to get a connection with Tom Brady. We all know that. We're seeing it on TV. Mike Evans even looks frustrated on TV. Antonio Brown and Tom Brady already have some kind of connection. That's what brought him to this team. I'm not saying it's going to happen the first week, but we're looking at week 14, 15, 16, 17, into the playoffs. I really, sincerely, Joe, if Antonio Brown still has what he had a couple seasons ago, I really could see him kind of fill Mike Evans' spot. And they're still going to use Mike Evans in the red zone and stuff, but I could really see Antonio Brown becoming the feature receiver up there if Mike Evans and Tom Brady can't get this connection. And that seems to be why they picked him up is because of Tom Brady, Antonio Brown's connection that they already have. I don't know if they built it in New England, if they built it in the off season, if they're friends or whatever it might be, but, but Antonio Brown and Tom Brady publicly have wanted to be on the same team for what, three or four seasons now. I like to see it though. I'm, I, it's going to be very interesting to see. Um, because if I was a defense coordinator, I'd kind of pull like a Greg Williams kind of move, and I would get my defensive backs to talk so much crap to both Mike <laughs> Evans and Antonio Brown because Mike Evans, have you seen it? He's already got into two scuffling matches already this year. He's kind of a hothead, and then you got Antonio Brown. Well, we don't even know where he's coming from mentally. Like, we, he's been on the low, but can we get him to pop anytime? And you just get under both of those guys' skin. Ooh, it's going to be fun, and just make him go off on each other. <laughs> Let him know. Like, oh, Mike Evans is a little better than you. Oh, that's why they brought Antonio Brown in, because you suck. Right? Just <laughs> hit them against each other and, and, and let the fireworks happen, because it's bound to happen. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It all depends on if Antonio Brown can get back to where he was. Now, do I think he's going to be a 1,600-yard, you know, 12-touchdown guy? He was in Pittsburgh with Big Ben and Juju that one season. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he's going to come in and be their, even their number one receiver. I think Chris Godwin is a very good receiver. I think Mike Evans is a very good receiver. I just don't think he fits Tom Brady's style at the moment. If he was on Tom Brady's team about five seasons ago, it would be a, probably a perfect fit. But Tom just can't press the ball down the field the way Evans needs it. Tom can't get the ball high enough the way Evans needs it. And it's just not really a good fit for the two as far as quarterback to receiver connection, but Godwin and AB just smaller speedy guys that can take a slant to the house. That's like a perfect fit for Tom Brady and to have both of them. I think in the long run, when they have to go to the playoffs and guys are hurt, guys are tired, guys are struggling to stay in the game. Antonio Brown is going to be a big difference as far as their playoff run possibly could go. You see how things are picking up with Gronkowski now. Tom Brady just has to work out the kinks of, of figuring out a new offense and, and a new way of doing things in Tampa. 
But when it comes to playoff football, playoff football in the cold weather, maybe they'll be the number one seed. They won't have so much, so much cold weather. But playoff football is defense and the run game. Defense and the run game. So I don't care who you got out at wide receiver. Your running backs better be going. Your offensive line better be going. And that defense better should be shut down, which right now Buccaneers have going for them. Yes, that's true. That's true. Thanks for tuning in to the third episode of Friday Night Wars. To vote for who won this episode, it's super easy. Just go into the comments. You can vote for the whole thing. Just put one name, or you can go round by round and break it down if you'd like. We're working on getting an Instagram page up. We're going to take votes over there, too. Probably happening this week. And before you do anything else, just take one second. It takes one second. If you're here still at this point in the show, you obviously enjoyed it. Just hit the subscribe button. Tap the little bell so that way you're alerted whenever we post content. I actually have some content that I'm going to post that I haven't even told Joe about, but you guys are going to see it probably tomorrow. Subscribe. It's going to be entertaining. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's talking about. <laughs> he's always he's always surprised me because, you know, he can't win. He just got to surprise me on something else. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your little trophy I'm going to put above your head because it's the only one you're going to get. <laughs> it's actually it. like this big it's like a little tiny like inch trophy there you go right there that's where i'm gonna put it in that exact spot no, all right one finger one finger <laughs> all right go dodgers go lakers uh Whew. hope a los angeles football team can win the super bowl you know what it's crazy about that both los angeles teams won basketball and baseball and you would think that people would be like, oh, go Rams, go Chargers. No, you know they're going like, go Raiders, go nah. 49ers. <laughs> you know <laughs> the L.A. market is not rooting for the <laughs> two L.A. teams <laughs> playing football right now. That's a whole nother fight for a whole nother show. <laughs> All right, guys, just always remember, you never know when you're in sports debates or sports talk when you're going to need to go to – what is up friday night war army mike on the mic here did you enjoy the show i am so glad to hear that if you enjoy the show take one second of your time one second to hit the subscribe button below and hit this little note notification bell right next to it so you are alerted every time we drop new episodes, and new content on our YouTube channel. Are you craving more sports content from us? I got great news for you. We produce daily content on all of our social media pages, and you can find links to all our social media pages at the One Stop Shop, our Instagram pages. So head over to the Ryan Sports Show Network page. Head over to at Mike on the Mic Pod. Head over to at Joe Morley Sports. All on Instagram. There will be links to other podcasts. There will be links to other content. And there will be links to everything we do across the board. You will not regret it. Anyways, until next week, I will see you guys on the next episode of Friday Night Wars. Step into the war zone. Step into the war zone.